refresh your recollection. Uh, absolutely. If I may approach, you may. I mean, if that's a transcript of it, then yes, that's what I said. So that indicates to you that you told the detective back then that you got Gannon in counseling right after the custody split, and you did that primarily because of the custody issue. Yeah, and I, and I don't know why I said that specifically, but the Dr. Burtek I referenced in this, uh, that that did not begin until, um, as I already stated, uh, late winter, early spring 2019. Okay, so, I'm say that when you it was initially the plan that the stop was going to come and bring all the kids to Alaska and you guys were going to live in Alaska that was that was the initial plan when you went to Alaska once I got stationed there that they were all going to come I up. think it's safe to assume that yes okay and she'd come up to visit you you know a couple times up there yeah for short periods of time she did and it's fair to say she didn't like Alaska she did not like Alaska and in part of that I mean she's from South Carolina right Yes. Hey, she, no, she's from North Carolina. I mean, so you're right. She's from Lumberton, North Carolina, but she lived a lot in South Carolina. Yes. And she liked the beach. She liked the sun. She liked the weather. Yes. She didn't like, she liked activities. Alaska was a little barren, a little depressing at night. Uh, you're asking me to testify about how she felt about everything? I'm going to stay away from that, Mr. All right. That's fine. That's fair. Yeah. Very fair. Regardless, she never ended up going to Alaska. Permanently, no. She did come to visit, as I already okay. testified to. And the, how long were you in Alaska again? Just shy of two years. And did Gannon and Lena ever move to Alaska? So initially, I got custody in March of 2018. Okay. They immediately came with me to Alaska, uh, finished out the school year. I don't specifically remember what we did over the summer. Okay. Uh, and this is 2018. In the beginning in the fall is when the uh, custody arrangement with the children, with the defendant in the Myrtle Beach household, oh, that's when that began in that fall school year, 2018. The fall school year of 2018, she was the person primarily responsible yes, sir. for both Lena and Gannon? In the Myrtle Beach household, yes, sir. Okay. And you felt safe with that? Yes, sir. And overall, at least what you observed, it appeared, you know, that she had a fairly good relationship with Gannon, Miss Douthat. From what I observed, yes, sir. I mean, I think you, you've indicated in, in some of these prior interviews that she appeared to care for him and he loved her. Yeah, absolutely. I testified to that yesterday. I felt like he had some love and trust in his, he had, had some love in his heart and he definitely had trust for her. And you remember, was it in Mother's Day of 2018, he actually did a Mother's Day card for Miss Dowd? I don't remember that specifically, unless you had a picture or something. I do, if I may approach. You may. Approaching with what's been marked as the visit. He's improbable. He's improbable. Thank you. Does that look familiar to you? I've seen this picture before, yes. Okay, and that was written in, um, by Gannon to Miss Dowd? I cannot attest to who it was written by. I was shown this picture by the defendant, yes, sir. Okay, does that appear to be Gannon's handwriting? It's similar to his handwriting, yes, sir. I don't have anything else to compare it to right now, and I haven't seen his handwriting in three years, Mr. Tallini. Okay, so by my purpose. forward a little bit to the January of 2017. You left on that Saturday? 
mean, January 2020, January 2020. You okay. left on that Saturday, correct? Saturday night, yes, sir, after work. And your mom had been there for, for a while, roughly a week or so. I, I don't remember specifically. Yeah. Uh, what did your mom do for a living? She is a nurse practitioner in the mental health field. Okay. Had you had conversations with your mom about Ms. Dowk and her mental health? Uh, yes. And you had some, you'd raised some concerns with your mom about Ms. Dowk's mental health? Uh, yes. And your mom thought she needed to be on medication? I don't remember that specifically. Um, so. Okay. Here we go into You had some fairly, you left Saturday, slept most of it. You got in early Sunday morning into Oklahoma? Yes. No, it was Sunday afternoon by the time I got there. Okay. Because remember when I got off the plane, uh, the defendant shared the news about Kobe Bryant passing. Oh, away. that's right. So it was in the afternoon at some point. Did you think Kobe Bryant fan? I don't remember. I mean, I think so. I, I don't remember that sticking out more. Derek Jeter was her, and the Yankees was the defendant's uh, super fan. Um, but so you had fairly decent communication with her for most of Sunday. Uh, I believe so. Yeah. But nothing seemed out of the ordinary. Nothing out of the ordinary Sunday. Um, she, she let you know that she took um, Gannon and Lena on a hike in Garden of the Gods. I, I believe so. I believe we can. We, we talked about that. Yes, sir. And she actually posted a photo of that on Instagram. I I, I, I don't know where she posted that photo, Mr. Tony. I remember talking again with Detective Riley at this point? Yeah, I'm sorry. sorry. Most of the, uh, after this, you talked to Detective Riley. I didn't, I didn't know Detective Riley existed until I got back home and Gannon was already allegedly missing. That, yeah, no. Let me, so sometimes, like, if you're saying you don't remember stuff, then I'm going to re-reference your interview with Detective Riley and then showed you a transcript where you talked about whatever I'm talking about to Detective Riley. Okay, so just just for procedure, so you know what when I'm when I'm jumping back to that, that that's why I'm doing that. that I understand. Is. I just don't understand your question. You, okay, we're on Sunday talking about Kobe Bryant, and, and then you jump to you remember talking to Detective Riley again. So could you clarify, please? A- absolutely. And when I and thank you because when I said if I ask a bad question, thank you for <laughs> let me clarify. Um, you had told Detective Riley that she had posted that photo on her Instagram. Okay. Okay. If, if I said that and you have a transcript of it, then I'm not, I'm not appeared to deny it. Would you, no, sir. Would you recognize that photo? If, if you showed it to me, I'm more than likely. Of course, you want to mark the defense exhibit A. Go ahead. Yes, sir, I recognize that photo. Okay. And that was a photo that um, she posted that Sunday on her Instagram of her hike. If you're telling me that, then yes. I, I don't, I, I mean, I don't see anything on here indicating Instagram and the date timestamp, but... I have no reason to, to uh, deny that, so. You're on a boot for admission on Defense Exhibit A. Mr. Allen? I guess I have no objection if it's just to show. That's a limited purpose. That is the admitted purpose. Okay. I'll allow for that limited purpose. She also indicated that he was... Um, would you like this back, Mr. Flynn? Oh, uh, we can here. Thank yeah, you. I don't want to sit yeah, right in front of me. Absolutely. Okay. 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 Al's getting aggravated. And he has every right to. She indicated to you that he was having some stubborn problems? Yes, sir. And that wasn't unusual. Sometimes he would have stubborn That was common. Sure. Um, she indicated to you that she was going to keep him home from school on Monday? Yes, sir. And at the point in time when she said that, that seemed somewhat normal to you? Keeping him home from school didn't seem normal, but the fact that he had a stomach issue and if it was to the point of, you know, embarrassment or, or whatever, then that was absolutely acceptable. Okay. And, and part of it, you know, he would worry about incontinence at school like he was worried about having an accident at school that was a worry that he had at that point i don't believe that was a worry of his um he typically was able to manage it well and then deal with it at home I mean, he was 11 years old at that point so and you commented to detective riley 
Um, then Monday she kept him home because it didn't, you know, we got to give him give him some medicine to help clean him out till he gets past that point. And that was a common practice. We okay. Yes. So he, he would get blocked up and you give him Miralax to get everything out and then he would be okay. Yes, sir. Okay. She had also let you know about the candle on the carpet that night on Sunday night. Sunday, January 26th. Yes. I believe that's when that, that uh, conversation happened, yes, sir. Okay. And Gannon was concerned. He was worried that he was going to get grounded for a year. All of that came from the defendant. I never spoke to Gannon about his, his grounding. I received messages from his phone about it, but I never spoke to him directly about that at that point. Now, that Monday comes and you don't have there, there's some communication but maybe not as much as normal and then you get notified that, that Gannon hasn't come home right um, and I imagine at some point you know that sends you you know into a panic well I mean to be clear I was in military school and training sure. so when you say not normal it was actually normal for what I was doing at the time okay I mean but I'm saying when when Gannon doesn't come home and it's getting to the point where it's at much later than it would be normal for him to come home, even being out late. And so, I mean, you start getting very nervous. Absolutely, because my son's not home as he should be. No, absolutely. Um, and then the next morning you got on a flight and you got back as quick as you can. Absolutely. Um, and when you get back, you know, initially, you know, there's some things that seem weird about uh, things that don't add up about what Miss Dowk is telling you, but initially you think that you guys are all on the same page trying to find again. What things are you referencing? The rental car. Oh, her getting a rental car? Yeah. Yeah, that seemed odd. That seemed odd, but nothing that it, you're not suspecting of anything at that point in time. It just seems weird that she's picking you up in a rental car. Yeah, her picking me up in a rental car was absolutely weird, yes, sir. Um, and you have some interviews, um, again, with some different law enforcement and so forth. What specific interviews are you referencing? Um, you had a couple different ones. I think the first one, I believe it was at Starbucks, but it was uh, with Detective Bethel. Uh, there was a few, uh, Detective Riley, Detective Bethel, and I think one other representative was there at Starbucks with myself and the defendant, yes, sir. And you're trying to uh, figure out anything, what where, again, could be if somebody would have taken them, anything like that, and you're, you're talking to I'm doing whatever I can for my son at that point, all during that time frame. Yes, sir. Absolutely. And, it, and at some point in time, um, you even had thought maybe, like, it could be Layden or it could be Mike involved. I don't remember ever having the thought that Landon was involved in any way. She, regardless of opinions about her, she loved her children. Uh, and I, Mike, I, I don't even, I, I have no comment on that. I, I, I don't think I ever suspected that either do you remember telling detective bethel the mom's married to a guy that's got a lot of trouble with the law and that was one of my first instincts was like when the come and go came up and they said that he would walk all nonchalant and everything was normal like the dude was here or something because he's got a lot of trouble in his background so like it came to my mind it was worth putting down i don't know if anything is legit and that's exactly what i said it came to my mind and i didn't know if okay. anything was legit so that's exactly what i just said yeah and then as that kind of goes on and everything like that, stuff just starts based on what Ms. Dowk is telling you. It's not adding up. Repeat that, please, sir. As this kind of day goes on and the days are progressing, the things that Ms. Dowk is telling you about your son and where he might be, it's starting to not add up with you. Yeah, it's... It, it, Starting with the rental car, as we've already addressed, it starts to not add up. Yes. And then when you see that her car is not at French Elementary, like I said, that's what's kind of, I think, what you testified yesterday, that was kind of the pivotal moment for you. Yes, sir. Um, and it, you know, then you go down to the police station, you want her to come down as well, and she won't come down to meet you at the sheriff's station. Uh, just to clarify, she was supposed to be the one to go to the police station the defendant was yeah uh the first time i went down there i went in her stead because they asked to bring some something to get gannon's dna or whatever and i said he's my son i'm going to take it down there and i'm going to you know 
lead the, lead the charge, if you will, whatever. And then, so I went down there, and that's when the first interview took place. I was to clarify. And then after that, though, you, you come back again, and were you, I, it's my understanding you were trying to get her to come down, even on that second interview, come down to the police station to be re-interviewed, or the, the sheriff station. When you say re-interviewed, you mean me or the defendant? I don't know when she was interviewed the first time or, or, or at all. Um, I just know I went twice. The first time, as I indicated, when she was supposed to go, the defendant was supposed to go. The yeah. second time, uh, that evening was after I had discovered the, her, the defendant's car was not where she claimed it to have been. And then her family, she leaves the house. Initially, she doesn't take all her stuff, but she just goes to a hotel, correct? I, Ms. Chalina, I have no clue where she okay. went. She doesn't, she's, she's no longer coming to your house. After, that would have been, uh, let me see if I get these dates right, the 27th was Monday. I think this was, would have been Wednesday the 29th after she left. I don't remember her coming back until she came to get her stuff. Okay. And how many days after that did she come to get her stuff? I don't remember a specific date. Okay. Uh, but, I mean, it's in that first week, though. I, I, I don't remember a specific date, Mr. Trillini. If okay. you have it, then I, um, I don't know. No, it's fine. Um, and she had family members that were helping her move out. She did have a few, yes. Okay. Um, and then you don't ever, until I think what you said after that point, you don't see her from then um, until court. I, I don't believe I saw her again. After she left, after she got her stuff, That within that first week, whatever the date was, until um, she showed up in, for the first court hearing after she was arrested, the defendant, that is. Now, between then and then, I think the first uh, pre recorded phone call we heard was on February 13th. Had you been in communication with her? To some degree, yes. Um, was it primary text messages, phone calls? I think it was uh, just a, a, a mix of emails, text, phone calls. I, I don't remember specifically. No. I know there was a, a wide range of uh, methods. And at least, I mean, would it be fair to say by... The time that you're doing these these phone calls with her, I mean, you're convinced at that point in time she's the person responsible for your son being missing. At minimum, a person of interest, if you will, but yeah, yeah I, I had a high suspicion she was responsible. I mean, and, and part of that is because, I mean, one, what she, you know, she was telling you things that weren't true about leaving the car there. So that was, that was the first thing that really shifted, correct? When you say because, I, I'd rather tell you the, the because, but yes, that was one of the first things was that really uh, put her as a person of interest in my mind, and I've said that repeatedly. Absolutely. And then she goes from saying that Gannon never came home to like a couple days later saying Eduardo was down there and raped me and took Gannon at gunpoint. No, before she left the house, I just, oh. the defendant told me the first rape story. We covered that yesterday. Okay. And sorry, some... Thank you for clarifying that. So she's sure. still in the house with you when she comes up, changes from he just doesn't come home to, um, to this Eduardo rape story. Yeah, I don't remember when the, the, the name, specific name Eduardo was given by the defendant, but the first rape story would have been Wednesday morning in the bed, in a master bedroom, as I testified to yesterday. And then... She goes, you're aware that she goes down to the sheriff's statement and does an interview about the, the rape story. I believe that was later that morning or early afternoon. I don't know specifically when she got there. Okay. I mean, and at that point, it is fair to say now, I mean, whatever suspicions, I mean, your suspicions have become more heightened at that point about her involvement. When it goes from he doesn't come home to this seemingly ridiculous story. Yeah, and I've, I've, I've been pretty clear since yeah. from the point of uh, not finding her car where the defendant said it was, from that point forward, everything just compounded and my suspicions just got worse and worse against the defendant. Absolutely. And what you know over, I think you've said this to a couple of people, she's an intelligent person. Uh, do you have record of me saying that to somebody? I do. Oh, wait, this is a repeat. 